It's time for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longine. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope? Larry Lasseur from the CBS television news staff and Kenneth Crawford, national affairs editor for Newsweek magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Peter Freelinghuisen, Jr., U.S. representative from New Jersey. Congressman Freelinghuisen, uh, you represent the 5th District in New Jersey. Now, New Jersey went to the Republicans in 1952 and then it swung to the Democrats last year. Now, do you think this is a continuing trend? Uh, Mr. Lasser, I certainly do not. It sounds like a leading question. As a Republican, uh, I feel very sure that it is not. Uh, I assume you're talking about whether or not we may have trouble in the congressional elections of 1954. Uh, I do not think so. I think those elections are going to be decided primarily on national issues instead of state issues, which were uh, at issue in the gubernatorial campaign. As I understand it, uh, your Morristown district represents uh, a pretty good uh, mixture of uh, urban population and farm population. Now, what about the farm vote in New Jersey in uh, relation to the falling prices? Do you take that? Well, uh, of course, maybe I should explain a little bit more about the 5th District. In the first place, it uh, is, has been, and is, and I'm sure will continue to be strongly Republican. It's a very good district. It has a lot of variety. Uh, there are a good many uh, farmers. There are a great many commuters, residences, and there is a growing industrialization of the area. So it's a good cross-section of America. I'm very uh, glad to represent uh, as articulate and intelligent a uh, constituency as I have. Uh, I don't think that uh, my district or the state as such will be overly concerned about the farm problem. Uh, none of us are happy if farm prices fall, and uh, the, my constituents are certainly no exception. But uh, I think, generally speaking, so far as I can find public opinion in the district, uh, uh, the residents of New Jersey are interested in a flexible price support program if we can work that out. Mr. Freelingheisen, <coughs> could you tell whether the, the falling farm prices had much to do with the uh, outcome of that gubernatorial election? You think it was primarily local issues, but uh, wasn't that also a factor? Well, there are so many things that could have had an effect on, on that uh, campaign, but I don't think it was a major factor. I sh should certainly say it was a, a relatively minor one. Well, the president has uh, in his program uh, cut defense spending. He's uh, encouraged the, uh, an increase in uh, um, unemployment insurance, and he's encouraged low-rent housing. Uh, but uh, what allows us uh, there should be a recession of long duration, Congressman Feelingheisen? Well, um, in the first place, uh, Mr. Lasser, I don't think the president's program, as it's outlined so far, we still haven't heard all the specific recommendations that he's scheduled to make, uh, depends on, uh, a, uh, it does depend, rather, on a fairly stable economy. And I don't think uh, there is any major allowance for a real recession. Uh, there has been a lot of talk in certain quarters that we are likely to have uh, a recession and that perhaps we should prepare for it. Uh, but I think, uh, by and large, the administration is uh, acknowledging there is a readjustment as a result of the buildup of the Korean War and uh, settling back after the uh, cessation of hostilities. Mr. Freelingheisen, uh, uh, do you feel that the cut of five billion dollars in defense spending, and it is primarily in defense spending, uh, is dangerous to the economy? Uh, number one, and number two, do you feel that it cuts defense too much? Uh, those are big questions, uh, too, Mr. Crawford. No, I do not, uh, uh, to begin with a direct answer to your question. Uh, there has been a shift of emphasis in the way we're going to spend the uh, defense dollar. It still takes a larger part of the total uh, dollar spent by the national government, some 68 percent, is being spent for defense or military purposes of one kind or another. I think that the uh, shift is all to the good. It uh, concentrates uh, to a greater degree than 
uh, we've had up to now on air power and on the new weapons of warfare. Uh, I've had the opportunity within the last 48 hours of hearing uh, Secretary of Defense Wilson and uh, Secretary of Treasury Humphrey uh, discuss the overall tax situation and the defense situation. I am sure as a result of those talks and what I've read in the President's message that we are definitely uh, in no way jeopardizing our national security. That still is primary. Well, Congressman Frelinghuysen, uh, the uh We'll acknowledge that this may be a good time to take a calculated risk on defense, but the Secretary of State's uh, latest speech on uh, foreign policy uh, lays emphasis on air defense rather than on local uh, ground defense, and he implies uh, with that that the next false move will mean that we will use uh, atomic weapons on the communists. Now, don't you think that's rather gambling on uh, a third world war and an atomic war? I don't think it's gambling on a war. I think it's a very a forthright effort to prevent the outbreak of any such war. Uh, what we are saying, I think, in effect, to the world, to any potential aggressor, is that we are ready and able, prepared, to go ahead and use whatever weapons at whatever place we seem most advisable. In other words, there will be immediate retaliation, as he pointed out, if there should be aggression. Mr. Frelinghuysen, what does that mean in connection with uh, a place like Indochina? What if the Chinese came into Indochina and made it much more of a fight than it is now? How would this policy apply then? Well, it's, it's difficult to know. It does mean that we don't necessarily commit ourselves to ground troops in Indochina as we did in Korea. Uh, until a specific situation breaks out, it's hard to know how it would uh, be. I do think it should be emphasized that we are not relying alone, as I understand Secretary Dulles' position, on air power as such. Uh, we are still emphasizing the uh, strong, mobile forces, naval, air, and army, and of course the Marines. Well, Congressman Frelinghuysen, uh, now that we're on the subject of communism, uh, right or wrong, a lot of people in this country think that the uh, recent uh, congressional investigations of communism have uh, well, been rather disturbing. And I understand that you have introduced a new bill regarding those investigations. Would you care to tell us anything about that? <laughs> Uh, yes, I'd be, I'd be glad to, Mr. Lasseur. The, at the beginning of this session of Congress, I introduced a bill which would provide for a joint uh, single congressional committee on internal security. Uh, it uh, came to me that uh, it would be a good solution of some of the problems which we've had in uh, recent months, uh, publicity-wise, uh, in this field. It also uh, is an attempt on my part to help uh, take communism in government uh, out as an issue in the 1954 campaigns. You'll remember that the president said he hoped that the executive branch would have uh, disclosed the facts about what the menace is in such a thorough way that it, he hoped it would no longer be a major issue. And it's my feeling that if the legislative branch, which has a definitely subsidiary role of investigating what the threat of communists is, uh, that and if we do it in a more objective and effective way, that uh, it can be minimized as a political issue in the 54 campaign. Well, uh, do I understand, Congressman, that your bill would uh, create a, a one committee, a joint congressional committee that would uh, end the rivalry between the House Committee, Un-American Affairs Committee, and the uh, Senate Internal Security Committee? It Is that the idea? What would it would accomplish? It, it not only would end the rivalry, it would uh, eliminate those committees entirely, and they would be replaced by a single joint committee like the Atomic Energy Committee, which has worked well, composed of an equal number of House members and senators. And uh, the purpose would be to avoid the competition for witnesses and uh, the competition for publicity, which has taken place under the existing setup. There has been, uh, in other words, a lack of definition of the jurisdiction of the respective committees. And it seems to me this is one field where we do not need two committees. They're not legislative in character. They're really primarily an attempt to reassure the public uh, it's very interesting. that uh, the, there is uh, a threat, but that it's under control, that uh, they know what it is. In that connection, uh, Mr. Friedlingheisen, uh, what do you think has been the net effect of the Monmouth Laboratories investigation in your state? Do you think it has been overall good or overall bad? Well, uh, Mr. Crawford, uh, that too is not an easy question to answer. Uh, the investigation at uh, Monmouth is not uh, 
finished, as I understand it. It is a continuing affair. Uh, as I understand it also, uh, the Army is going to make disclosures about uh, just what the problem has been and whether there is a present problem. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, it has had a very definite uh, harmful effect on morale uh, at Monmouth. Uh, on the other hand, if there is uh, evidence of current security problems, I think we certainly should get at the root of it. Uh, Congressman, I understand that you conducted a questionnaire among your representatives, uh, your constituents of this very representative uh, district. Now, uh, could you say from this questionnaire what you think the voters are actually going to be interested in in November? Well, I think they're primarily uh, uh, interested in the major issues which we're going to face uh, at this session of Congress. In other words, they're interested in whether or not we are uh, reasonably secure from aggression. They're interested in whether or not we're going to be able to reduce taxes and how much. They're interested in whether or not we are going to have a reasonable labor law. They're interested in the broad problem of uh, the position of this country in the world and what kind of foreign trade we should have. Uh, I think very definitely that uh, the issue in November is going to be the extent to which uh, we Republicans have been able to present a program as outlined by the President in his series of messages to the public. Well, thank you very much, Congressman Frittinghausen. It's a great pleasure to have you here tonight. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry LeSeur and Kenneth Crawford. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Peter Frelinghuysen, Jr., U.S. Representative from New Jersey. Now, the growing interest in moisture-resistant watches concerns us very greatly here at Longines because of the long experience that we've had with watches of this type. Now, the first moisture-proof resistant watch was made by Longines in 1909. And here is one of the very first and early models. Now, for the bird expedition to the South Pole in 1933, Longines furnished all the timing equipment. And here is one of the Longines watches that was used by the crew. It's hermetically sealed. The winding stem is concealed here. It's inside the outer case and it resisted moisture and freezing cold, resisted ice and water, and it gave remarkable service. Now, present-day Longines moisture-proof watches give no indication at all of their special construction. They're thin and they're trim, and they're as at home in the living room as they are out of doors. The keynote of Longines manufacture has always been service, service to all who wish the finest possible timekeeping. It's for inventiveness, willing to pioneer, as well as for superlative quality of manufacture, that Longines watchmakers have won so many world honors. Ten World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, honors for accuracy in all fields of precise timing. And yet, you may buy and own, or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as 7150. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches.